Hi, Dr. Rand. This question is regarding low testosterone levels. I am 28 years old, no previous steroid usage. My total test levels were 11.7 nanomoles per liter, range was 10 to 35. My SHBG was 42, range was 10 to 50. And my calculated free testosterone levels were 198 picomoles per liter. And the normal range here was 225 to 725. My free androgen index was 27.9. And the range there was 20 to 160. Uh, I'm, I'm not laughing, except that yeah, we, we got this one nailed for sure. Uh, the doctor played it down and said it's a little low, but obviously I know it's a disgustingly low level for someone my age. The total test translates into about 330 nanograms per deciliter, and the average for even an 80-year-old male is higher than that. My biggest concern right now is fertility. We are trying to conceive, and I'm worried that this also means my sperm levels are in the gutter also. We've tried for three months without success, but I know it takes more time than this. I am being retested in one month time, and this time they will test my LH and FSH also. Not sure if it's related, but they also tested my thyroid since the symptoms were fatigue and low energy. TSH was 6.26, and the range is 0 0.4 to 4. He also downplayed this, saying that even though the level is not ideal, it isn't bad enough to be causing me my symptoms. To sum up my question, does low testosterone level always mean low sperm count, or can sperm count be adequate on low testosterone? Also, what's likely to be causing an underactive thyroid and a low testosterone level, or maybe these two aren't related and they are separate problems I have? I can put up with low energy and fatigue and all of this, but my number one priority is definitely fertility for the time being. Thank you very much for taking the time to answer my question, Frank. So yeah, it sounds like we've got a young male with low testosterone and fatigue, some, some signs and symptoms of low testosterone. Uh, there are also numbers here which represent and, and, and signs and symptoms here of hypothyroidism. Again, we have to break that down somewhere along the line here into is this just hypothyroid, is this an autoimmune uh, reaction, is it the Hashimoto's? You'll treat it the same, but um, there are some different aspects to, to, to both of those and, and um, anyway, it definitely S uh, signs and symptoms or symptoms of low testosterone cross over with signs or symptoms of, of uh, low thyroid but it looks like you've got both going on here at the same time which at age 28 it's it's a little late but I don't know how long this has been going on it would lead me to suggest an MRI of the brain to rule out a pituitary microadenoma because you've got two hormones here and that's all I got which are um, relatively low, and that could mean that we've got an issue with the pituitary and it's affecting all of them. Uh, not necessarily what's going on here, depending upon how stressed we are, you know, testosterone levels will drop. And of course, you know, I can talk about moving to Bali and being a beach boy, um, but, you know, what are the odds of that happening, you know, in other words, hey, yes, lower stress levels could, could help you, but practically speaking, this does come up an awful lot especially living here in LA, I argue just in the 21st century, um, you know, even if I just told you, hey, well, lower your stress levels, that puts stress on you. <laughs> and I, okay, well, I gotta lower my stress so I can lower my, uh, or I can raise my T. So, uh, practically speaking, since the number one priority here is fertility, first of all, to answer the question, no, low T does not necessarily mean you have low or certainly zero sperm count at all. It doesn't take that much. The, the lytic cell produces testosterone, the lytic cell in the tes testicle itself. The Sartoli cell is right next to it, and it produces these sperm cells, these sperms. It requires local prime, the Sartoli cell does, from the lytic cell to get it to work, and it doesn't require that much, okay? Once that sperm has been birthed, if you will, then systemic testosterone can keep that sperm alive and well and kicking, literally swimming. Uh, but without this local prime, a very little, but a prime nonetheless, the Sartoli cell won't work. Well, if, you, if you're producing some testosterone, which clearly you are, it, it, 
then presumably the Sartoli cells are doing their job. There's no, oh, if I have more, I mean, I'm sure there's a curve, but I don't think it's a linear curve, uh, more testosterone and more uh, sperm. But, you know, down on the low end, uh, I, I'm, I'm certain that it's, it's rounded and you're not, you're not dropping off into, you know, nil just because you're close to nil with testosterone, in other words. You know, as long as you have that minimum amount, you probably have a healthy enough, um, assuming there's nothing else involved here with infertility, you wouldn't have any problem with um, a sperm count sufficient to, to conceive. Um, the TSH is definitely high. Uh, this is a one-time reading, though. Is it, if this is consistent, and as I've said on, on, uh, or earlier today, uh, it's very volatile, TSH, and uh, more so even the thyroid hormone itself. If it's repetitively high, the TSH, and the thyroid low, then yeah, we got, we got a problem here. But as I also said earlier, we talked about testosterone and thyroid being related. Uh, it may be a matter of just raising testosterone and the thyroid will come up um, enough that you don't need to use replacement therapy. But again, to answer the question, um, well, again, these questions this week seem to all tie together well. Um, I, know. I hope we play them in some sort of order that, uh, because I don't want to repeat all over again what we've already talked about. But yeah, again, low testosterone levels, uh, are related to low thyroid counts and by more specifically by raising through replacement therapy testosterone levels often we can get thyroid levels to rise to a normal or optimum level also um, and again yes this could be a source both of those could be a source for energy and fatigue but um, if anything uh, if by reducing stress and eating right and sleeping well if all the things you do to make yourself healthy don't resolve what is presumed, but not necessarily correctly presumed uh, to be a low sperm count, then uh, the first choice would be HCG. Tell your body to produce more uh, testosterone and therefore get the Sartoli cells to get uh, working more. A lot of people look to HMG and say, well, gosh, that, that works directly on the Sartoli, Sartoli cell. But as I described earlier, that's usually not the problem. The Sartoli cells would work just fine as long as they had the prime. So focus on getting the lytic cells up to snuff, and the Sartoli cells typically, in my experience, work just fine. You don't need HMG. It's expensive. Um, it, it's superfluous it, it, more times than not, for sure. Um, but let, I, I would get a semen analysis uh, before you make any moves. You're, you're assuming something that, no, isn't necessarily true at all. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Doc. Hi, Doc. I'm 48 years old. Uh, I'm a 48 year old male. I was diagnosed with uh, hypogonadism. Hypo how do you say? Three times real fast. Hypogonadism. Yeah. Hypogonadism. <laughs> About three years ago. My current doc has me on 1.5 cc of testipionate every five days. Assuming it's 200 milligrams per cc. Uh, in uh, in the beginning, I did uh, I did feel a lot better, more energy, increase in sex drive, etc. Uh, just feeling overall a lot better. My doc has my blood work checked regularly. I stay in the gym, and I'm pretty good shape for my age. My T level my T level now is around uh, mid scale. It's now about 2.5 uh, mid scale. Well, we don't know what scale, but um, it's now been about 2.5 years of therapy and the effect seems uh, to not be as effective as, as, if it star as it first started. Would it be crazy to talk to my doc about going to 2cc <coughs> every three days based on the half-life of the testosterone and the peak time of 24 to 48 hours? Seems like it would benefit by increasing um, milligrams and reducing time in between shot. Thanks, doc. Well, First of all, a hundred, uh, one and a half cc's of testosterone sipinate every five days. Would be three hundred. That's an awful lot of testosterone, and yet he says, right, that my T level now is around mid scale. Hmm. <clears throat> so if if someone's injecting one and a half cc's every five days, in my experience, their T levels are going to be off the charts. You know, LabCorp tops off at fifteen hundred nanograms per deciliter typically. I would think that that's what you're going to see no matter when you test. So 
up front, that seems weird to me. So I got, I, you know, I would like, okay, are you sure it's one and a half cc's? Are you sure it's testosterone sipinate? Yeah. Uh, who's giving it to you? Are you getting it your doctor's office? Or are you giving it to yourself? Yeah. I, I, I just, this is, is odd. But whatever the dose is, if your titer is in mid range, then based upon what I just said, if mid range is anywhere, well, if the range is four to 1200 and make it easy, okay, um, mid range would be 800, and we just talked about that. If yeah. it's below or hovering around mid range, then okay, yeah, it's suspect for underdosing. Combined with the the clinical signs and symptoms, he's saying, hey, I don't feel good. Okay, so okay, the numbers are iffy, but then more importantly, I don't feel good. I don't feel like, and he had felt better at one time, so he had relief of symptoms. They were resolved for a while then yeah, I would look to the T, but here's the thing that probably everyone's going, hey, but Rand, but Rand, what about estrogen? That, I mean, this guy could be, and he hasn't mentioned anything about it, but we just stick with the theory. Why would this guy who's taking a, a CC and a half every five days have low T? If it were getting converted to something else, that would certainly do it. He doesn't talk about his estrogen here or his dihydrotestosterone. If you're converting a lot, like remarkably a lot, then yeah, maybe that's what's going on. Maybe mm -hmm. the E2, uh, the estradiol is off the roof, uh, off the charts, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, or the dihydrotestosterone is off the charts. I don't know. We don't have enough information here, but yeah. certainly, uh, you know, that's very, very suspect because I can't think of any other reason unless he's getting. This isn't really testosterone, sipping eight, 200 milligrams per ml. It's not really one and a half mls. So the answer to the question would be not necessarily, okay, do I go to two cc's every three days? But yeah, you might want to consider for just the testosterone portion of this, dosing yourself so that you get above mid-range. Certainly you want your, your, your mean or, or actually your lowest assay, the lowest point right for your next injection to be 800 per the studies and per what we know. But that, again, maybe it's more for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's the first thing we jigger. And however that comes to in the numbers, yeah, and presumably it would require an increase. And yeah, if you're trying to get more even tighter, so you don't have as much up and down, yeah, more frequent dosing is, is can do that, but then you start to, again, get into defeating the purpose of using an ester. Mm -hmm. uh, but that having been said, I rarely increase, well, I don't ever, excuse me, I don't increase the dose per injection, never more than a cc at a time. If anything beyond that, I will um, increase the frequency. Why? Well, you don't want to have as big a peak in the valley. Mm. You know, if you've got seven days and you increase the dose, you're going to have a bigger peak in valley yeah. in that period than if you do the same dose but shorten it up, you'll have more stable. You know, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's easy. And the body works that way too you know it's again it's not linear the way it reacts for example if you get to a point uh, where your testosterone goes uh, well beyond a certain point your body will start to convert more estrogen from testosterone than if you were lower than that and it, it, anyway in the body's comfort zone if you will mm -hmm. uh, like like blood sugar you know you'll get less of an insulin reaction if you don't really really spike it all at once than if you just sort of barely get above mm -hmm. that homeostatic range so that's part of the reason, uh, but again, we have no, I would definitely look into, I, I'd want to know before I answered anything else with this guy, what's yeah. your DHT level, yeah. what's your uh, estrogen that's level, true. what's going on here? Um, you know, it's not going to go backwards and into, you know, something up the chain. Uh, it, would, it would have to be something below testosterone, estrogen, or, or DHT. Awesome.